And I'm excited. I was excited to see the rookies last night. It's great to have them uh, in here for really the first time that we've had a chance to see them face to face. And, and we appreciate that. Sure. Appreciate all the hard work that everybody's done to set up this camp and make it possible and safe at the same time. So Mitch and Rick, uh, Rick just got done talking to Kirsten Krug and, and Rocco um, with facilities is, They've just uh, gone above and beyond. Uh, uh, again, Mark Donovan has overseen that and made sure that uh, things were working efficiently there. And, and it was all graced by, by Clark Hunt. So uh, those, those become very important. Uh, I appreciate the league and the union and uh, them working out um, an agreement where, where football could go on in a safe manner. And, um, and, and we can look forward to, uh, to a season and then listen here we sit we sit with the young players now we have an opportunity to work with them uh, work with them uh, we, we start off with uh, a few days here where, where they're, they'll be lifting and, and conditioning and, and then uh, we'll ramp up into um, some other things and gradually get ourselves into pads and we'll incorporate the vets once they get in we'll give you all the detail to that uh, down the road here um, when it's all categorized and, and uh, mastered here by the coaches and myself. So um, other than that, listen, it's uh, uh, what, a, what a, again, what a great opportunity. It's, it's a very unique time. Um, we, we think we're going to put the players in a, a position where um, they're, they're safe. Um, it's, it's a responsibility, though, at the same time. So it's a responsibility uh, for the coaches. Um, for uh, the players and anybody dealing with the players to um, uh, to take responsibility to follow the, those uh, the format that's set for us uh, to fight this this, this virus and, and still have an opportunity to play football. So um, I will continue to uh, work with the players on that. The players again uh, will work together on that. There's going to be a give. There's got to be a little. Uh, give and take situation going on here. Responsibility, I guess, would be the term uh, when we all leave the building as coaches and players that we handle ourselves properly and, um, and and keep ourselves as safe again as we possibly can. And and um, and that be um, that'll be important for this season to again to move forward. But again, um, it's quite a neat setup. I wish you guys had the opportunity to see it. I'm sure you've seen probably pictures of it by now, but. Um, the setup is, is tremendous. We're going to work in the stadium and, and uh, down in our facility here. Uh, but the majority of the meetings and, and, uh, and food uh, will take place at the stadium, dressing room at the stadium. And, uh, and then we'll have our practices down here and we'll be able to lift down here also. So We'll start with Adam Teich. Hey, a couple of things. I wanted to ask you first about your reaction to Larry's decision to opt out this season. But also I was wondering what you're now that guys are back in the, the building every day now and you're cranking this thing up, what's your um, level of concern for your own personal safety is? Yeah, so listen, for, I'll start with Larry. Um, I'm a huge Larry uh, doing eighth RD fan. So <clears throat> I'm uh, and I also was raised by a doctor. So I understand the dedication uh, that it takes uh, to be a doctor. We're all blessed to have doctors in our lives. Uh, they're, they're givers, they're not takers, they're givers, and um, they're healers. So uh, they want the best for you. And so Larry has that quality, and you're seeing it to the, uh, to the utmost here. I, I just think it's tremendous dedication to his profession, what his future is going to be, and, uh, and mainly to the people that he gets to help. And, and so uh, my heart goes out to I had a great talk with him, great visit with him. Um, his players support him, uh, the, the veteran players support him, and the coaches support him. And, and we know, uh, you know, we understand when, when football is over, this is going to be one of the greatest doctors ever. So it's, uh, um, we, we appreciate that. The great thing about doctors, uh, the ones that I've, I've been in, in, in touch with over my, my life here, and like I said, I was raised by one, and, and I, I've got three of my closest friends are, are doctors. So um, they're givers, man. They they and, and they're not the takers, so they're they're very humble people uh, that want to help you and heal you, and and they're not out looking for 
uh, like Larry, they're not out looking for the pat on the back that they're doing this or that. They're not looking for attention. I mean, Larry is buried in. He's not looking to do interviews and all of this stuff. He's buried in and trying to get the work done that he needs uh, to, to heal people. And, and man, I mean, what a dedication that is and, and a love that is. I, I'm, I'm so happy and proud of him. Um, as far as uh, the setup here and um, um, feeling like we're in a safe environment, I think people have gone to great ends to, the, to do this. Um, we're as safe as you can be here. Like I said on this, so Adam, dedicate the dedication uh, and, 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 and staying um, disciplined when you leave this facility will be important. When you're here, this is a safe environment. And so you've got to continue that once you leave here. And, and, uh, and so that, that ends up being important. And we have a plan for that too. So that we'll talk to the players about it. And, and um, you know, so I feel good about it myself. I feel good about it. Yes. Let's go to Herbie. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey coach, in hindsight, in light of LDT's decision, how big is the selection of Lucas Nyang now, when, now that you look at it and how much do you anticipate him starting off camp getting reps at right guard. Yeah, sure. So, well, let's get him in here first. I mean, let's get him in practicing and we'll, we'll get him adjusted and see how he does. But Remmers is another one that we picked up who, who's a good football player. And we've got good players here right now. So uh, we're, we're going to be, uh, we'll be okay. And, and uh, at the offensive line and, and obviously to add him into the mix, uh, um, we're excited to see him. We, we get a little chance here with the rookies to, to visit with him. So, uh, we're excited for that, but yeah, I think we're in, we're in good shape uh, all the way around. Uh, we we love to add Larry, absolutely, but um, we understand his cause, absolutely I understand that too. Pete Sweeney, you're lauded as one of the most creative play callers, if not <clears throat> the most creative play caller in the the NFL. With the virtual off season, this ramp up period, no preseason games. I I just was curious how much you think that is going to be impacted as what you're able to yearly do as far as almost having a, a new offense seemingly every season. Pete, we've tried not to let that slow us down uh, in that area. Um, and, and then we'll see. We Obviously, we haven't been able to go on the field, uh, but uh, we're going to. And, we're, and the way the new um, – the way that the league and the union has put this together, uh, we're going to end up with enough padded practices uh, where you can go full speed and and then our, our the shell and, and – uh, uh, padded shirt practices where we should be fine for timing purposes, right? This is a throwing league right now. So um, it is important as a run game is that timing again uh, in the throw game becomes important because it takes hours. And so uh, we have an opportunity to do that with the, with the new rules that have been put out for us. Go ahead, Vi. Just, just one more thing about Laurent. I, obviously it's a momentous decision, but I, but I actually wonder if you were even surprised by it. Um, and then just a, a side point also, it, do you see, I know you were a lineman, we all know you were a lineman, but do you see a little bit of the uh, lineman protector ethos in, in kind of how, what he's done and, and along those lines? Yeah, you're taking me right into a little Greek philosophy there. I, I, um, I, I do. Uh, I know Larry, though. I mean, I've been with him here now since, since he uh, came into the National Football League. So I, I get it. I mean, I, I, I just think it's uh, what a tribute to – to him and to the profession. If I didn't know how doctors are wired, I, I, well, but I know, I mean, I've got it. I know exactly how they're wired and the, and the love and dedication that they have uh, to that, to protecting and, and healing. And so uh, they're, they're natural givers and, and, uh, and healers. And so uh, this, did, no, it didn't surprise me. No, it did not. To, to answer your question, and like I said, I had a great visit with him. Uh, you know, a unique situation. Let's go to Seren Petro. I know uh, Rick was uh, talking about that. It was about nine weeks that uh, in putting everything together to kind of create the the environment you guys have got there. He also detailed how you were, uh, you know, kind of the lead coach on how this was all going to be put together. Can you kind of explain how you guys are working for nine weeks, yet the agreement just came together a couple of days ago, like how you can get everything done? Or did you have to go at the end and, and switch things around because things the – NFLPA ended up wanting. How, how does that, how do those timelines match? Well, yeah. So there were massage, there was a little massaging going on between uh, the, the league and um, the union. They asked me to, 
uh, step in as a coach, kind of a, a, a neutral figure um, to share some of, experience, of the experiences I've had. I've been there through the lockout. I think there's a completely different situation than the lockout. Um, as you recall, the lockout was uh, the, the organizations versus the player uh, where coaches weren't allowed to talk to players. And so, uh, therefore, we weren't able to check on the players, see how they're working out or do virtual work. Out. Any of these things that we've been given when really uh, the factor out there that you're working against right now is, is the virus. So when we have all these virtual meetings, we could see who's working out, who's not, talk and communicate with the player, um, and, and, and in some cases do virtual workouts with the player. So um, the, it's a different communication process that took place. And, and I think that will help the players coming in be in better shape than maybe what took place. Again, I was a head coach at this time. What took place during, during the lockout time? So, you know, that's, uh, I think it's a different starting point. I think the setup, though, is, is tremendous on how we're giving the players an opportunity to ramp up and get themselves ready to go. And, uh, you know, my hat goes off to the league. Like I said, I was just uh, a narrator in there and, uh, uh, between the league and the union, and, and I appreciate both of them let me in uh, the meeting there, and I think it all worked out well. Therese, and then close it out with Sam McDowell. Hey, one thing that always interests me is that when you win a title, you suddenly go from being the hunter to the hunted. Um, I could see Patrick is already pretty motivated, <laughs> by the way. But just from your point of view, you know, what is the message to make sure the focus stays on winning? Because you're going to get every team's best shot every single week. How do you keep guys focused on that mental challenge of knowing players are going to play better against you because they want to show off? Absolutely. And we, we, you cherish that part. You've worked very hard to put yourself into that position. Um, and, and so you understand that, but you also understand you got to go through the process. And um, if, you, if, if you're not willing to do that, then, then good things aren't going to happen. The, the guys know that. So, and then you, you've got to be blessed with good leaders, and I think we have good leaders on this football team. And I, I mentioned this to the rookies. I said, take your notes. Uh, make sure that you study. Make sure you come prepared to meetings and to practice. And I said, uh, uh, and one reason is when you see the veterans do that, that's how they roll. So you better, you better come in ready to go. And uh, if you don't, uh, you're going to fall by the wayside. And, and that won't change, I, I don't believe, with this football team. But listen, it's still day by day. That's how you have to go about it. It's not what you did uh, in the Super Bowl here. It's uh, what you do going forward. And, and so that's, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll work off of that message there. It's clear that you're confident what you guys have set up at the facility. And you touched on this a couple of times, but obviously you're going to have a lot of guys go their separate ways once they leave the facilities. Is it fair to say that once you start the season, that responsibility is going to be the most important thing to finishing the season? And in that sense, what, what instructions are you giving players? And, and how confident are you that, that 53 guys in a season or 60-some guys in a season are, are going to abide by those? Yeah, so, uh, again, I tell you, day by day, I, I think we're all doing that with this virus. We've learned that through the pandemic. Things change. And so uh, we're going to stick by what the experts tell us. Um, and, and, you know, the, I mentioned this before to you guys, but the, the simple parts of that we can do is wear our masks when needed. We can uh, wash our hands uh after contact with people or ourselves and then you know make sure we use social distancing again when we can so those are important things that are based fundamentals with this we're going to do it and then they've got the setup here uh you know whether, whether it's a plexiglass between lockers or whatever you know whatever all the different things that they've set up here uh with separation within the meeting rooms uh and, and so on so uh we're going to try to abide by that we're going to try to teach the best way we possibly can. And then we're going to trust uh, the players and the coaches. Uh, I'm one of those, right? I'm included in this, that we do the right things when we leave here. And, and that's uh, um, really, that's all you can do. And then, uh, then you go play, you focus in on playing.